What we have in today's video is yet another ultra wide angle lens. This one is from Nisi. This is the nine millimeter F 2.8 and it is a direct competitor to the very, very good nine millimeter F 2.8 that we are already aware of made by Lawa. But this one may have a couple of tricks up its sleeve and I don't wanna spoil this review, but in some ways this is actually better than the Lawa. I do wanna show you how this thing comes packaged, so let's start there. And I have to say the packaging is excellent. Nicely printed box, good padding inside, there is a nice instruction manual and a warranty card, and Nisi even threw in a free 67 millimeter ND filter, which is is great. There is a quality branded microfiber pouch for the lens and the lens itself. Plastic front and rear lens caps and a nice metal rose petal lens hood. The lens itself is very well done. It feels solid coming in at 382 grams. For what I can tell, it's all metal and glass. It's compact, but not quite as compact as the Lawa 9mm. This is maybe two centimeters longer overall. Starting at the rear, what immediately jumps out at you is the yellow rubber gasket for weather sealing. The Lawa is not weather sealed, so this is a plus for this lens. Metal rear lens mount, no electronic connections. This is all manual. The aperture ring is very smooth with even resistance, no clicks moving from f2.8 to f16. There is a silver accented ring which is a focal distance scale and in front of it a very smooth focus ring. It has a little bit more resistance than the aperture ring but it's very well done. I found myself moving the focus ring back and forth with this lens mounted to my camera just because it feels premium. Rotation is just a touch over 45 degrees so not a whole lot. The front of the body of the lens flares out to reveal a nice sized front lens element with a nice logo on top and lens specs on the bottom. This lens features a 67 millimeter filter thread, which is a good size and readily available. It can also focus as close as 0.2 meters, which is impressive. Inside there are 14 elements in 12 groups with 10 straight diaphragm blades. Mounted on a camera, there is nothing to complain about. It is a good looking lens and I like the little yellow accents. But being good looking isn't everything. Can this lens perform is the question and the answer to that question is it can. The first thing I noticed in shooting this lens is the sun stars. This is a signature for Nisi lenses, but what's incredible is that these are sun stars wide open at f2.8. It seems like you can do this with almost any moderately strong light source, and if you do stop the lens down to f4 or f8, the sun stars get even better defined. The second thing I noticed is a lack of distortion. 9mm is extremely wide. It is the widest focal length available on APS-C that still produces straight lines and is not a fisheye. Then I have to talk about sharpness. This lens is sharp, very sharp in the center and decently sharp in the corners, even wide open. I'm going to say it, it's about as sharp as the Lawa 9mm in the center, which is an amazing achievement. And the corners are really about the same from what I remember. And I do feel bad that I sold the Lawa a couple of weeks ago because it would have been a great direct comparison because these two lenses are really identical, very, very close. But I did manage to compare this new lens to a couple of other ultra wide angle lenses that I have available. Here it is next to the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8, both shots at F2.8. Center sharpness is about the same, that is to say excellent. The Sony is significantly brighter in the corners because it doesn't have as much vignetting. However, in terms of sharpness, I think the Nisi may be a little bit better in the edges. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Here is the Nisi versus the Tokina zoom that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, and here it's a wash. It looks like the center and the corner sharpness is identical. So in terms of performance, this Nisi is pretty solid overall. It suffers from the same problems that we got with the Lawa 9mm. Primarily, that is vignetting. You get very dark corners when you're shooting at f2.8, which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's pretty easy to fix a vignetting issue in a uh, post-processing or editing program, but I would have to say from memory, I think that this one has slightly brighter corners than the Lawa, but again, I don't remember 100%. I'd say they're on par to maybe the Nisi is slightly better in terms of vignetting. As far as barrel distortion, it is minimal. Flaring is also very well controlled in 95% of situations, although I did capture this shot, which was pretty crazy looking. I think this was just a super bright magnifying 
magnified light reflection. As in normal use, even shooting into the sun, the flaring is nowhere near this bad. There's a little bit of ghosting with the flare, but it isn't too distracting in the majority of cases. And chromatic aberration, it seems to be under control most of the time. Very little visible in my samples, which is great. So apart from vignetting, there's not much to complain about in terms of optics. Low light performance is good wide open, the lines are straight, colors are vibrant, and the sun stars are an added bonus. And as much as I've talked about the Laowa in this video, I think that the real competition for this new Nisi lens is the Sony 11mm f1.8 because it's wider than 11 millimeters. I would say this is probably closer to a 10 or a 10.5 when you look at side-by-side -side comparisons. It's wider than 11. It has an amazing autofocusing system. It's dust and moisture resistant. It has a uh, focus hold switch, has an autofocus manual focus switch. So it's a very full featured lens. It's one of the best, if not, I'm gonna say this, it's my favorite Sony lens that they've released in years. Uh, it really is a stellar performer. So right now it looks like you have three options. Surprisingly, the cheapest option is to get the Laowa, which is an excellent lens by all accounts and is currently on sale for 399 US dollars. The middle option is to get this Nisi for about $50 more, which gets you about the same performance, but with less vignetting and more sun stars. The expensive option is to spend $100 more and get the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8, which again is more like a 10.5 or a 10 millimeter in reality. It has autofocus as I mentioned, it's weather sealed. It has a lot going for it. And I don't think there is a wrong choice between those three lenses anyway. If you were to do this sort of comparison or this sort of video three years ago, you really wouldn't even have any of these options. You'd be stuck with a pretty terrible Sony ultra wide lens option and that's about it. Um, so that's why I like the Laowa because at the time there was nothing else on the market that was that sharp, that wide. Whereas now if you're looking for an ultra wide angle lens for your APS-C E-mount camera, there's at least half a dozen and it's growing every single day. It seems like it's getting to a dozen very, very good choices. So that is going to be it for my review of this new Nisi 9mm f2.8. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you think this is better than the Lawa? Do you think the Lawa is better? Or do you think the Sony 11 millimeter is the way to go? Or should you just get something like an ultra wide angle zoom lens, maybe the new Sony 10 to 20? I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. I will leave some links down to all three of these lenses in the description below, so check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all of your comments, all of your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more. Have a great day. Bye-bye.